Well, the teams have completed their warm-ups, so we are about to get started. Uh, this Just a reminder for everybody of the situation at hand. Um, Island School took the first round championship. Kapaa High School took the second round championship. So that sets up this uh, winner take all um, for the KIF championship. And not only will the winner tonight be the uh, KIF champions, but they earn a berth in the D2 HHSAA uh, state tournament. So there's a lot at stake tonight. Winner moves on, um, the loser is out. And so we'll, we'll lay out here a little bit for the starting lineups. So we want to thank uh, our public address announcer tonight, Mr. Tim Geis, who is running the audio board and getting everybody pumped up tonight. Um, as the teams shake hands, um, this promises to be a good one. You can feel the energy in the crowd. Um, I don't know. I'm just excited to be here. Yeah, Coach. I'm excited for this matchup and to see good, two good, great teams uh, battle it out. You know, when it comes to uh, atmosphere like this, it's anybody's game. You know, the, uh, they do all the X's and O's in practice, but when you come to an atmosphere like this, obviously you've got the crowd involved, you've got the lights, you've got, you know, a webcast going. You know, there's all these different factors that come into play. So. Um, anything can happen on any given night, um, and uh, I'm excited to see this battle uh, between these two teams. And we want to, uh, before the match gets underway, thank our officials tonight. Um, uh, up top tonight will be um, Merrill Carvalho. Um, the second referee is uh, Mr. Wayne Doliente. And uh, our referees on the lines tonight will be um, Nani Velasco and uh, Stephen Carvalho. So we thank them for uh, coming and helping make this, uh, this championship match possible tonight. And we are about ready to serve. We just need a ball. And looks like uh, Kapa'a will start with Carlin Kamoku at the service line. Beautiful dink shot there by number five. That looks like uh, Nohea Judd with the with the kill. Yeah, what a nice in-system play. Nice pass uh, by number eight. Nice set and getting their middles established early. Katie Brown with the serve. And a beautiful cross-court kill by Olivia Jenkins and the Warriors are on the board. What a shot, difficult shot, went thumb down, gave an extreme angle shot. What a shot by number 12, Olivia Jenkins. Sierra Summer on the serve. Wow, the set was a little wide. 
But Hanoi Hanenberg made a great adjustment for the, her first kill of the night. Yeah, set a little wide by Kapala setter number five. Hanoi making a great adjustment, getting her feet outside of the ball and making a nice cutback swing to the opposite angle. And Carlin Raposo Kamoku gets the uh, set in the back row but hits it a little long and Voyagers get the side out. Tough serve by number seven, Brooklyn Valentino. Um, if you haven't seen uh, Island School play before, the Valentino sisters are key for them. Definitely, they've... Um you know, have a lot of experience playing volleyball. Their IQ is very high, and just a lot of movement on that ball. That was, that was a tight serve there, but it was called out. And so Warriors get the side out, and coming up to serve is number one, Kylie Ann Baltazar. And the Voyagers run that little quick back set, but it is hit out of bounds. Nice. I like how Island School is establishing the middle early, kind of like how I mentioned in the er earlier part of the broadcast, trying to get them going to the op open up their pin hitters a little more throughout the match. Back set to Magoon is stuffed. Oh. Olivia Malafu with the block, and the Warriors take the 5-3 early lead. What a block by Malafu. Just her size alone and presence on the court adds so much for the Warriors. And the Voyagers try to establish the middle again. However, the, the, the timing is off and another point for the Kapa'a. I would keep running that middle if I were Island School. They'll be able to get the connection soon enough. Just keep running it, keep going, being persistent. And Brittany Valentino attempted to go off the block, but it looks like it did not touch anybody on the Warriors side, and Warriors get the point. That's all you can really ask out of your middle blocker is to get a nice touch like that. Unfortunately for the Warriors, they weren't able to get that ball. Back to serve for the Voyagers, Nohea Judd. Samiano, the junior setter, uh, handles the overpass for Kapa'a's eighth point. Now into the game for to serve for Kapa'a is Ku'u Ipo Hunt. And Magoon hits a nice one to the back line. That's a beautiful shot. Yeah, nice and controlled. Just nice, easy stroke. Down the line shot, finding the puka in uh, Kapa'a's defense. It's not always about power in volleyball. <laughs> Placement is just as important. Oh, definitely. Wonderful block by Malafu. She 
read the setter. The setter attempted the dump, but she was there for the for the block. Yeah, Malafu active on that net from side to side, making aggressive movements, getting her hands pressed over the net, and making some great plays on defense. Nice up by the Voyagers. Wow. What a nice, probably the rally of the night so far. And Kapala was scrappy on defense that time and it paid off. Yeah, nice rally on both sides of the ball. You know, once again, just trying to minimize those errors. Carlin Raposo Kamoku hits that one wide, and the uh, Voyagers get out of that uh, rotation. Next up to serve for them will be uh, Brittany Valentino. Nice dig. Woo. And number seven, Brooklyn Valentino uh, snuck what, that one right through the block. Yeah, nice swing by number seven on Voyager's team. Tough swing, finding the hands. Um, Kapa just need to be a little bit more disciplined with their handwork um, on the net and just being able to press over. The crowd helped uh, the Lady Warriors uh, with that one. Everybody in the gym that was wearing a green shirt yelled out on that one. Back to serve is uh, Kapa's setter, Tyra Samiano. Beautiful swing by Brooklyn Valentino that time, going off the block. Yeah, Hanneberg posing a big block on Kapa's side. Once again, just trying to find uh, disciplined hands and uh, Valentino will be able to find those high hands and getting it off the block. That was a, a tough play for the setter there for Kapa. Um, being that she's in the back row now, her only option was try to keep it on her side of the court. That tight set on the net. Serving for the Voyagers is number one, Mandy Gokan. And a little Unforced error for Kapa, and they are they call a timeout with uh, the score being 11 10 in the first set. Lady Warriors up. What have you seen so far um, in this set? You said that it was going to be a tight one, and so far that's what we have. Yeah, I'm actually really impressed with the serve pass game of both teams. Both teams really serving tough, putting pressure on the other team in serve receive, but both teams being able to handle the serve receive pretty well. The first touch pretty good. So both teams being able to run their middles quite a bit. Um, and so I'm really actually really impressed with the level of play thus far. Um, out of the gate, um, you know, you would expect to see a lot of nerves, um, you know, a lot of uh, mistakes, probably some mental errors uh, with jitters uh, or butterflies that the girls might have. but. Man, I don't think we've seen any of those butterflies tonight thus far, man. They've been kind of going at it and attacking each other. Yep. Um, so back to serve for the Voyagers. Mandy Gokan once again, their libero. What 
a beautiful dink by Kuipo Hunt out of the back row. A beautiful placement. Uh, very intelligent shot for the sophomore. Nice kill there by Valentino. Sorry, everybody. I always got to look down at my paper to make sure I get the right one. That was number seven, Brooklyn Valentino with the kill. I apologize to the Valentino family if I um, get them uh, wrong at any point tonight. Miscommunication in the back here, and Kapa'a uh, gives up the point. I like Magoon. She's swinging hard, swinging high, um, you know, for the Voyagers. So, you know, that bodes well for them moving forward in their offense. Wow, and Kapa'a got a little bailed out there on that one because it was a, a tight pass on the net. Uh, Samiano did her best to bring it back, but Island School got a little over anxious there, and they were called for a net violation. Uh, this time Magoon hitting from the left side, and um, her her attempt does not go over the net, so the Warriors take the 14-12 lead. This is a back and forth uh, set right here we got. And looks like uh, double contact was called on the setter. Uh, talk about how difficult it is sometimes, Coach, when the ball is in these long rallies as the setter, the ball gets slippery. Yeah, obviously more touches throughout the play, right? It's touching each player's hands. The ball gets slippier and slippy, uh, slippier. So uh, very tough for the setter to be able to handle the ball correctly um, as, a, as a longer rally, uh, the longer the rally goes on. And Olivia Malafu... Um, there was a little mistiming on her attempt to hit that one set, but she was able to get the overset and put it down. And the Warriors get the service again. Back into the game is Kylie Ann Baltazar. The junior, she's got some, she's repping the pink shoes tonight. The two Olivias, Malafu and Jenkins. Like, yeah, what a block, man. Uh, textbook block, both hands pressed over the net, sealing the net, and then just a stuff block on the other side on the Voyagers. Mm. And there, Olivia Jenkins gets another one. And that was almost inside the 10 foot line. What a beautiful shot. Man, that, I think uh, Jenkins put a little extra mustard on that hit. She came with authority with that kill. Once again, what a nice angled shot into the 10 foot line on the opposite side. Um, yeah, what a shot by, by Jenkins. So as uh, Voyagers call their first time out, um, we have the Lady Warriors at 17 and the Voyagers at 13. Uh, again, we are in the first set. This is a best out of five uh, match tonight. So the first team to win uh, three sets is going to be our KIF champion. And uh, so far this game, this match has lived up to its billing. Definitely, man, the gym is filling up. Fans are still filing into the gym. Um, exactly what we expected. Just a wonderful atmosphere and environment for volleyball on the island of Kauai. Yeah, what a great opportunity for these girls to play for a KIF championship, have all of their friends and family here. 
supporting them. This is a night they will probably never forget. Also nice to see uh, the Kauai High School teams as well as the Kauai High School, uh, Waimea High School teams, all the other different schools coming out to support um, their friends. Uh, also, um, I guess competitors during this season, um, but just out here to watch some good volleyball tonight. Absolutely, and Mary Magoon gets the uh, side out for the Voyagers off the timeout. What an up by number nine over there. What a up by Katie Brown. That ball looked like it was headed for the ground, but she um, sprawled out and got a beautiful dig. Yeah, what a transition play finished off by Mary Magoon with the nice wrist away down the line, catching the line. And Olivia Jenkins has started off really um, hot tonight with her hitting. I think that's, um, I'm not keeping official stats here, but that's gotta be at least her third or fourth kill tonight. Yeah, I agree, and, man. And she's, she, she's a you know, powerful hitter, and when she hits hard, that's hot, tough to stop. She's got the hot hand right now for the Warriors, so I would keep feeding her. Perfect pass by Gokhan. Oh, a beautiful block by Magoon and company off the Carlin Raposo Kamoku attempt. And we are at 18-16, Warriors still in the lead. Yeah, that's a big block to be facing with Magoon and Halliday on the other side for the Voyagers. There's that middle again, the quick set. Olivia Malafu finds the opening and she puts it down. What a pass, what a set, staying in transition and being able to get those middles going. Coach, when it comes down to it in volleyball, isn't it all about the passing? It really is. Serve and pass, you'll hear that very frequently and often, um, and that's literally what it is. You know, whoever can serve tough, pass well, has the upper advantage on this game. Kapa is obviously trying to establish the middle tonight. That time, the Voyagers were waiting for Sierra Summer. Yeah, they were camping out, maybe just a little um, too predictable in Kapa'a's offense um, on that one. But once again, when you're in this type of situations, you know, as a player, you're just going with what's working for you right now. Tough serve by Brittany Valentino. Forces Kapa'a to put over a free ball. Ooh, tough. Set wasn't exactly where um, Brooklyn Valentino probably wanted it, and uh, she hit that one into the net. So the Warriors get to 21st, which is very key in these uh, these sets. Yes, let's see if they can steady out and close out in five. Ooh, that one looked like it was just out, and. Um, Looks like Mandy Gokhan got some last second uh, help from her teammates and she let it go and turned out to be the right decision. That was a tough serve by Gokhan. You may not be able to see it on our webcast, but from our vantage point, um, that ball is doing the hula, you guys. That ball by virtue of the way she's hitting it, it is dancing. So that was a tough ball to pass. Yeah, kind of going back to what we were talking about as far as serve and pass. Um, just going back to those last two plays, Kapa up 20 to 17. Um, number five, Samiano goes back to serve for Kapa, serves it just a bit long, gives the point to Island School, which makes it 2018. And then Island School comes back, gives a tough serve, Kapa struggles with handling that first touch ball, making it a little bit out of system, making it tough for the setter to get to the ball, which gives a point to Island School, which makes it 2019. So just a great example of how 
um, how important serve and pass is in a game. If you can control that game, I mean, you have uh, a lot of advantages to be able to take the set. So Kapaa was forced to take their second timeout um, to stop the momentum. Uh, let's see what Gokan can do with her little jump serve here. Kind of a jump float, right? And beautiful set outside to Hanoi Hanneberg. And Hanneberg, if she gets on a roll, that could be huge for the Warriors. Yeah, once again, nice pass from Kapa. Nice set. Hanneberg with the put away. Free ball for the Warriors. And that time, looks like Olivia wasn't completely comfortable with the location of that set and she hit it out of bounds. And so the score is as tight as can be. Kapa'a 21, Island School 20. Nice little scramble by the Warriors to keep that alive. Woo. And Kapa, they were they were going for it on defense, but again, was that Magoon on the kill? Magoon on the kill. Once again, finding that back right corner. What a shot. Once again, just finding placement. High volleyball IQ, just putting the ball in the corner of Kapaz, uh, Kapaz court. Oh, a little pancake, our first pancake of the night. And the Voyagers gotta be happy with that. The pancake leads to the point. And the Voyagers take a late lead here, 22-21. What an effort by the Voyagers fighting back. Oh, you gotta love the scrappiness on both sides of the net. Everybody's going for it, hitting the floor. This is beautiful. Especially when you get the crowd involved in it. Of course, you're gonna be willing to sacrifice your body and go for the ball. So, some exciting, exciting play going on tonight. Sierra Summer with the serve. Oh, beautiful up by the Voyagers that time. And that time, Brooklyn Valentino can't get it over and Kapal wins a crucial point going up 23-22. Valentino didn't quite get an approach on that, didn't get far out enough for her approach to be able to make a good contact swing on that and just falling short in the net. Nice dig by Gokan. Woo. Beautiful effort by Raposo Kamoku. But again, the placement of that shot was key. Yeah, Valentino finding the area one part of the court, you know, strategically and intentionally placing the ball, finding a hole in Kapaz's defense. Ooh, a break for Kapa. From our vantage point, that ball was dancing. If that would have made it over the net, that would have been very tough for Kapa to handle. But Kapa. Brings back Kylie Ann Baltazar. She is going to serve for the set. They're up 24 23. Oh! And Malafu puts it away. 
And the Lady Warriors take set number one, 25-23. What a Malafi beautiful putting set. putting it away on that last hit. What a cross to be able to go to your senior leader, you know, put it in her hands and let her take care of business and put it away for the Warriors in the first set. That, that set right there, I as I was watching the ball go to Samiano, I thought she was going to set it outside. She was a little off the net, and she almost gave kind of like, you know, you've got that one set and the two set. That was kind of like a one and a half set. Yeah, and th thankfully for the athleticism of Olivia Malafu, being able to adjust and just being able to make a play out of, out, out of a ball by her setter. So what a play and what a, what a way to end the set. So a great start for the Lady Warriors. Um, um, as many of you probably know, um, Olivia Malafu, as soon as this uh, volleyball season ends, she and uh, Tyra Samiano, they will be hard at work on the basketball court um, and they'll be trying their hardest to defend their uh, state championship that they won um, on the basketball team. But hey, they're probably not thinking about that right now. They want to win this KIF championship and see what they can do in the volleyball state tournament. Yeah, although basketball might be their probably first sport, you know, um, I think they're all in right now to this uh, volleyball game and uh, their volleyball team and uh, what's going on right now for them and exciting for them. Um, but, you know, well, what kind of experience do you think that brings, having some kind of postseason state experience that these uh, basketball girls can bring to this volleyball court and to this team? Oh, that's got to be. That, I mean, that's huge, you know. In, in, in sports, a lot of times people will talk about your gamers, right? Who's your gamers? And, you know, having those girls go as far as they did last year in the basketball state tournament, playing under pressure, um, this is not, playing under these kind of circumstances, it's not something new for them. Um, it's something they've experienced, but take nothing away from the Voyagers. Hey, they are, uh, we need to remind you, they are the defending uh, KIF champions. Yes, and, and they also and do return the, I believe, KIF Player of the Year in Mary Magoon. So obviously the target's on their back, um, but they are the defending champions, and so they continue to be so until someone takes them down. You know, on that note, um, did you know, well, you probably know that last year was Island School's first ever girls uh, KIF volleyball championship. Uh, the, um, I found this out from our athletic director, Greg Gonzalez today. Volleyball has been played in the KIF for 53 years. This is the 53rd season of girls volleyball. And did you know that Kapa? If they, are, if they were to win tonight, it would actually only be their fifth ever KIF championship. When you think about it, that's pretty amazing. So the girls, even the Kapa'a High School girls have a lot to play for and they have a chance to make history tonight. Definitely a big accomplishment for the Warriors and something to, uh, to fight for uh, tonight. Do you know by chance who, um, who's... Um has the most KIF titles in girls volleyball in the league? You know, I uh, I did not get that number completely, but um, if I double check my notes from uh, from our athletic director, he sent me today. He said over the last 18 years, Kapa'a High School has actually won three KIF championships. That was in 2005, 2015, and 2016. He said in that same time period, by the way, D2 volleyball started in 2005. Waimea won nine championships during that 18 year period and Kauai High School won three championships. So set number two is underway and the tough serve by Gokhan forces an error on, on uh, the Warrior side and the Voyagers are off to the 1-0 lead. Yeah. Uh... Gokhan with a tough serve, man. Just a just a jump flow, hits the ball very flat and tough, making it difficult for the Warriors in serve receive. Nice dig there by number eight, Brittany Valentino, but a little miscommunication, and the Voyagers don't get it over the net. 
And the Warriors get their first side out. Back to serve will be one of their two seniors. I believe they only have two seniors, right? And one of those seniors is number 11, Sierra Summer. What a dig by Magoon. What an up by Summer. Oh, that had to be the rally of the night right there. Both sides going at it. Um, you know, for the Warriors, that's probably the biggest block that you're gonna see on the island with Hanneberg and Malafi blocking next to each other. Within that series of that rally, there's at least three blocks. Unfortunately, they weren't able to close it out for the point. Serving is number nine, Katie Brown. Ooh, and Brooklyn Valentino had the set right on the net, no blockers. It was a little tight. Looks like it kind of threw her off a bit and she hit that one long. Yeah, Katie Brown with a nice set to the outside, pushing it to the pin. Uh, blocker getting caught a little bit on the inside, leaving the line wide open. Unfortunately, Valentino hitting it just a little long. Tough serve by Baltazar and she gets the ace. You know, going back to your um, comment about the set uh, by Katie Brown on that previous play, um, talk about how important it is for the setter to deceive the block. Oh, it's huge. And I've, I've noticed in this second round of KIF play, um, Brown is now doing a jump set, and they're actually running their offense a little bit faster. So with her doing a jump set, um, deceives uh, the defense and the blockers, should, should deceive the blockers of Kapa a little bit more. So uh, there you go again. You see uh, Brown with another jump set, um, flipping it to the backside of the court. Olivia Malafu has been pretty dominant at the net. Wow. And there she goes again. The, um, the cut shot by Olivia uh, Jenkins. She's done that probably four times tonight. What a shot, man. That's a difficult angle and a difficult shot to be able to hit, to be able to cut it back, thumb down, right into the 10-foot line. I mean, that's been her sweet spot all night tonight. Nice up by Raposo Kamoku. Big block for the Voyagers, oh. too, with number five and number 13 out there on the outside. Um, they probably pose the biggest block for the Voyagers, but what disciplined hands, four hands across the net, making it difficult for uh, Kapaz outsides to be able to put the ball away. Back to serve Brooklyn Valentino. You gotta give it to Magoon. She, even if she's a little off balance, that time she took off of one foot and she still had enough power to put it down. You would never think she's coming off of a shoulder injury, man. That arm looks better than it ever did, if I'm saying so. Oh, tough serve. Beautiful pass by Gokhan. What a difference it makes when you get a free ball like that and your libero can put the pass perfectly to the setter like that. Staying right in system. Valentino finding the seam of Kapaz block. Kapaz middle not really closing to the 
um, to the pin, therefore causing the seam and Valentino being able to put the ball away. And that pass goes a little too close to the net, too much for Samiano to handle, and the Voyagers take the 6-4 lead. Tough serve by Brooklyn Valentino behind the line. Nice up by Valentino there. Gokhan is forced to just put a free ball over. And there is Jenkins again. She goes again. Placement over power. She put that deep into the corner and um, it goes down because that's not used not usually where you put your defenders right yeah Jenkins finding the Pukas and Voyagers defense finding a way to uh, let the ball find the floor speaking of Pukas have you been watching Puka Nakua in the NFL he's tearing it up this year he is man. former BYU wide receiver doing amazing things with the Rams right now so here we are. The Voyagers are up 7-5. Back to serve is Nohea Judd. And the double contact is called on Brown that time. That looked like one of those where the ball might have just gotten a little wet and Little too much for the fingers there. Yeah, just a little bit, you know, getting a little bit too much spin on the ball, which kind of gave our R1 ref Carvalho uh, the instant call of a mishandled, uh, mishandled set. What a dig over there by Yamashita. Oh. You could tell when Ka Carlin Raposo Kamoku went up for that one, she was going to hit it hard, and it paid off. She needed that. Kapa needed that part of her, their offense. Right now, they're just relying on Jenkins and their middles, so they got to get, um, they gotta get uh, Kamoku going. Kamoku gets her second, uh, second kill in a row, and the Warriors take the 8-7 lead. Back and forth game. We couldn't have asked for anything more than this. Everybody's definitely getting their money's worth tonight. I got in free, so. <laughs> and all of you watching at home are free admission to as well. So. <laughs> That's why I agreed to do this webcast, because I wanted to get in free. I was hoping our athletic director would bring a plate lunch our way, too. I don't know if they're running a food booth tonight. No concession stand tonight. All eyes are on the game and in the gym. That's too bad. They could have made a, a good amount of money probably tonight. Oh, beautiful block there by number 10, Madeline Holliday. Um, we haven't said her name too much, but she's been solid in the middle for the Voyagers. Yeah, what a what a, what a, what a great volleyball player. It looks like only a sophomore, man. She's got a lot of promise for the future for the Voyagers. Samiano sets outside to Kamoku. That's dug up. Again, Holiday with a nice touch on that block. Ooh. Oh, what a shot. I don't know if Magoon meant to do that, but she hit that ball. It was a little off-speed shot right over the net. Too much to handle. She caught it right on like the outside of her hand, found the right side on the side of the block, and found the line shot, which Kapaz's defense couldn't handle. What a shot by Magoon. Interestingly, we talked about the um, Kapa'a girls that are going to be uh, moving on to basketball right after this, but I know 
most, a lot of these girls on both sides of the net are gonna be moving on to soccer or canoe paddling, basketball. You know, there's gonna be no rest for some of them as they, um, you know, pursue their second sport. One of the great things about Kauai is that our kids are able to play so many different sports. Yeah, I think that's the beauty of the, you know, the athletes on the island is that um, many of them are multi-sport athletes excelling in almost every single sport that they participate in, uh, you know, which I think just causes a well-rounded athlete in general and overall, um, as well as just a well-rounded person being able to learn from different coaches, different teammates, as opposed to just focusing on one individual sport throughout the year. Magoon to serve, right down the line. Oh, Samiano really didn't have too much to do with that ball. She, I think she pretty much had to do the dump and it worked. Just a little sus touch. <laughs> yeah, it was a, she had a nice touch on that. And she goes back to serve. Valentino and Madeline Holiday that time off the Kanoi Hanneberg swing. And I'll go again, back and forth we go. The Voyagers up now 11 9 in the second set. What a beautiful up by Samiano there. play on both sides of the net but Valentino is there to uh, finish it up that was uh, Brooklyn Valentino on the kill what a shot down the line you know finding that you know Papa giving uh, the Voyagers hitters a lot of the line and Island School taking advantage of that that was a tough one for Hunt she was in the back row so she couldn't really jump on that I think just a miss set Wow, how did that go get over? Oh, Sierra Summer with the kill. Beautiful timing between she and Samiano on that play. Yeah, I didn't think Summer was, um, uh, Sierra Summers was going to get to that ball, ball, set just a little bit low, a little tight to the net. And Sierra makes a great play in being able to take that ball and find the back corner of Island School's defense. Sierra Summer is listed at 5'8". Olivia Malafu listed at 5'10". Um, to me, it looks like Holiday might be the tallest middle blocker on the court. Um, I don't know, she might be a little taller. What do you think, Coach? Yeah, maybe at 5'11", or even six feet, I would say, as a sophomore. Man, that's gotta be exciting for the Voyagers to have her for a couple more years. Jenkins continues her hot night she goes through the block that time. Uh, Coach Deej Polaris for the Voyagers tries to cheer his team on. Gokhan with a great pass again. A setter's dream right there, the overpass. Katie Brown getting in some of the offense of the Voy for the Voyagers, calling her own number, going over on one. What an aggressive play. The setter really in, in volleyball is, is the quarterback, isn't, aren't they?
The ball got a little lucky on that one. But hey, they'll take it. They'll take the point. Valentino with just a mishandled ball. Recognizing she made the error. I'm sure she'll come back with another hit this, uh, this next rally. These sets that um, Brown is putting out there, they look like they're going probably three feet past the antenna, but I guess that's the kind of set that um, uh, Brooklyn Valentino likes, huh? Yeah, they're pushing that set very wide. Valentino at least four or five feet probably on the outside of the sideline. That play, um, the. The Warriors get the point. It looked like it looked a little messy at the net there. Somebody looked like they were in the net, but hey, the Warriors come out with the point. Coach Deej Polaris is questioning it. Not sure if he'll win this um, argument. He does. He will, however, win the the uh, contest for the nicest shoes of the night. Check out those kicks. Yeah, we got to talk about that with the whole Island School staff, coaching staff. Rocking the Jordans. I mean, it's not every day that you see uh, Jays around the island, and just seeing the coaching staff, obviously, um, you know, taking up their uh, shoe game to the next level. Okay, so no video review in high school volleyball, so the point remains with the Warriors. Tough, tough set that time. It was a little, little low. Magoon uh, just didn't, wasn't able to get that to that one. Pass a little off the net. Katie Brown having to come out to the 15 foot line, having to make a set, pushed all the way to the outside. Just a little short, causing it a little tight for uh, Magoon to be able to put the ball away. And Magoon again. With the over pass, she puts it down and she is trying to pump her team up. What a kill by Magoon. I just like the fight that she has right now, wheeling her team for every point. Really the offensive um, terminator for the Voyagers right now. Nice pass by Yamashita that time. She got up there and she took a little bit off of it and just put it in the middle of the court. What a transition play by Kapa'a. You know, I think Malafu was a little unprepared for that set on a transition, but once again, the athlete that she is makes a good play on the ball and finds the court. Speaking of athletes, I mean, Sienna Yamashita at that libero position, what an athlete she is, both volleyball, soccer, um, and of course, softball. Yeah, she may not be um, the highest IQ in the sport of volleyball, but just the athlete that she is, she's all over the court. And very rarely you'll find the ball that'll hit the ground on the Warriors side because it's just Yamashita's nose for the ball and just being, uh, being all over the court. I think it's really a testament to her athleticism when you consider she's the starting libero for the volleyball team and this is really, I mean, she's just a sophomore. I'm pretty sure she hasn't put as much time into volleyball as she has into softball and soccer. Um, but, you know, just a testament to her athleticism that she um, is doing so well this year. Yeah, Kapa kind of changing up their lineup. Um, first round, they went with a 6-2 uh, lineup rotation. And in the second round, made a, made a change to run a 5-1 offense. Um, Sienna Yamashita being one of the setters in that 6-2 offense. Uh, but now for the second round, um, they inserted her into the libero spot. Uh, so once again, a new position for her to play. Uh, but I think doing very well at the position and adjusting. Um, and once again, just making plays and keeping that ball off of the floor. So since they went to this 5-1 offense, have they lost yet? They have not lost since moving to the 
on their first their first uh, time that they moved to it, they, they did have a loss, but ever since then, they've been uh, they've been winning. All right, back to action. You gotta give it to Brittany Valentino. What a nice shot down the line, away from the block. Yeah, once again, Valentino finding that line. That seems to be the hole in Kapa's block right now. Hopefully Kapa can make some adjustments in being able to take away her line shot, forcing her to be able to hit the angle. But once again, that's just a high, high IQ play by Valentino. Judd with the serve. Magoon finds the opening in the defense, and they take the Voyagers take the 17-16 lead in set number two. Magoon crafty with her offense, going with the tip shot on that, recognizing Kapaz's defense, playing a little on the perimeter, and coming up nice with the shot. Uh, and just what Kapa needed was a serve into the net. Um, to kind of swing the momentum back their way. Isn't volleyball such a game of swings? It is, and you know, just it's how crazy how the momentum can change, not only from set to set, but from play to play, um, you know, it can definitely swing. Beautiful dig by Hunt. And Carlin Raposo Komoku with another kill. I tell you, this girl has really impressed me this year. She's only a sophomore at five foot. They've got her listed at 5'10", I believe. I mean, what a future she has. Yeah, for um, I think Kapa has three sophomores on the team, you know, and all three sophomores seeing a lot of court time right now. And so I think the future of the program is definitely bright. Um, for the Warriors, but also for the Voyagers too. I think they come in with three sophomores and one freshman in Kolohai, Kuhaulua. Um, and so they obviously too, um, you know, their sophomores being able to see the court too, as well as uh, Kuhaulua throughout the season as being able to see the court too as well. So I think uh, both teams um, have some young talent uh, on, the, on the roster. Uh, which will bode well for both sides. So we may be seeing a lot more uh, Voyager and Warrior um, matchups uh, to come. What do you What do you think the I mean the quality of volleyball? Now you've got girls that are playing, you know, club ball during the summer. They're traveling. Uh, how has that affected the quality of volleyball on the island? Oh, I think you know uh, before you know the main clubs that you pretty much saw was just on the west side of the island uh, in Waimea and then in Lihue they started a few clubs and then Kapa too as well more recently um, so the club ball and the year-round play has increased on the island but now you even see a few players who are now making the trip to Oahu and playing on a few Oahu teams and traveling every week um, so the sacrifice for the families and the girls I think is really playing off and has only improved the, the level of play within the KIF League. And the Voyagers off the timeout get exactly what they wanted, which is a side out. Um, Yamashita made a, a beautiful effort for that. Looked like Kuipo Hunt may have been there for it, but hey, you can't fault anybody for diving and hitting the floor like that. And a double contact is called against Samiano. Again, the ball's getting slippery. The girls are getting tired out there. She takes this opportunity to dry her hands off at the net.
Kapa needed a big swing there, and that's exactly what they got out of Raposo Kamoku. Yeah, Raposo Kamoku with a nice pass. Samiana going right back to her on the outside, putting it up in a high ball. Kamoku going up high, finding the hands of the Voyager block. Undisciplined hands making the ball go out to the, uh, to the bleachers. Wow, what a break for Kapa'a. That ball was right on the line. Right on the line. That play gives Kapa the two-point lead, 21-19. Once again, I think this is when it'll be crunch time. Both teams will probably up the level of play and the anticipation. I got to tell you, Katie Brown put some very hittable balls up there. I mean, you know, she as I've watched tonight, it looks like her outside set um you know they traditionally would call that the four set right that float set but her sets are a lot um kind of get out there a lot quicker tyra samiano um you know she puts a little bit more air under her balls but i really like the way katie brown uh puts those quick sets out there yeah i think katie brown i've noticed once again i kind of mentioned that she kind of started doing a jump set towards the second round and with that jump set Island School, I've noticed, has been running a quicker offense, um, almost running a goal ball, what they call a goal ball to the outside. Obviously, by running a quicker offense, makes it tougher for Papa's block to, and particularly the middles, being able to get out quick to the pin, which is always leaving a bigger seam uh, in uh, Kapa's block and being able to give uh, the Island School uh, offense uh, a greater advantage. So. Uh, Katie Brown, I think, setting, a, setting a, a great game tonight. Very calm, cool, and collected as I watched her. Not really getting flustered, um, but just putting her, um, her hitters into great opportunities uh, to score points. Valentino with the serve. Oh, and that ball kind of got caught up in the net, but looks like Holiday got the block and... We are tied again at 21. Serving is Brittany Valentino. There's that goal set again. Beautiful set. If you look at that, she set that ball from the back row and put it in a perfect spot for the hitter. Yeah, once again, nice set by Katie Brown. Nice put away by Valentino. Oh, Sierra Summer went up there with the right hand a little bit, but then switched to the left and put it in probably the only spot it could have went to and actually gotten a kill. Beautiful placement by the senior. What a, what a pass there by Gokhan. There is Jenkins again with a huge kill for the Warriors. Finding the right off of the hands of Halliday. Uh, Olivia just kind of using her hands um, off of the sophomore blocker for the Voyagers. That set again, that quick set to the outside. She's putting it in a perfect spot. Man, the tempo of that set, I mean, making it very difficult for Kapa to even be able to set up their block. Uh, what nice uh, setting by Katie Brown. We're tied at 23 here. Ooh, the overpass by the Voyagers, kind of an unforced error. And Kapa takes a critical 24-23 lead. And Sierra Summer goes back to serve for set number two. Oh. 
And despite the urging of all of the Kapa'a fans, that ball sails long. By the way, what a turnout tonight. They, they encouraged everybody to wear green shirts at Kapa'a school, and the fans really came out. This Kapa the Kapa'a student section is loving every point. And again, another chance to serve for the set, Kylie Ann Baltazar. What a smart play by Jenkins, going with the roll shot, rolling it right over the Voyager block. What a play. Second set, 26-24. Yeah, what a what a play to end that set. Once again, just one of those lucky bounces that that ball could have dropped over, dribbled over the net, um, and just not being able to just get the ball up on the Voyager side. So, Kapa off to the start that they wanted. Of course, remember. That night they played on OC 16. Um, Island School went up 2-0 and then Kapa roared back and won the next two sets. If there's one thing I know about volleyball is that the match is never over until you win that third set. Yeah, I mean, you look at the scores from both the first set and the second set, just a matter of two points. I believe the first set was 25-23, second set 26-24, at that point in time, man, it's anybody's game, you know? It's almost like when you go to a fifth set, you know, it's anybody's game at that point. So, you know, obviously Kapa has the momentum here, uh, going up uh, two sets to none and going into the third set. Key for them is just being able to maintain that momentum and not let up on the gas, uh, gas pedal. And then I think for the Voyagers, you know, I, I don't think it's you want to change anything up. You just want to continue on with what you're doing and just continue to be persistent. Um, stick, uh, stick to your fundamentals um, and just keep pressing on because you're, you're only two points down in each of the sets. And there's not much errors that's happening on their end, too. So if you're Coach Tori Tuttle and Assistant Coach Keapo Gonzalez, what are you telling your girls right now? I'm just trying to keep, you know, the focus and not getting too relaxed, you know, in our in our approach to this third set. Um, so once again, just staying disciplined and focused in our mind and not trying to be too loose on the side of the court in, in the huddle right now. And then once again, just trying to uh, just trying to finish off strong. One thing that I kind of uh, tell my boys in like a tight set is, you know, just, just break up the game into small games, you know. So you got a game to 25, let's play a game to, to seven points first, let's, you know. And let's just work to, who can get to seven first. Once we hit that seven, let's work for the next seven. So just really breaking that, that big game of 25 points, which in a third set and in an exciting match like this can seem like forever. So just breaking it down into smaller games can just give them a little bit more immediate uh, urgency in being able to get after every single point. And then on the other side, um, if you're Coach Deej Polaris, what are you telling your girls? Man, I'm just trying to motivate them. I think emotionally, I think they're doing everything right from a technical standpoint in, um, you know, in their skill. Um, I think they're doing everything right. I think it's just you know, trying to keep them persistent and uh, keep their uh, keep their attitudes up, keeping their morale up, um, and, and, you know, just trying to keep the, the vibes uh, pretty positive on their side of the court because, once again, there's nothing for them to put their heads down about so far or to, uh, to get down about. Um, they're right there in this match. And once again, as we mentioned, momentum, that can change at any point in this set too as well. 
I'm not even sure if you guys can hear us out there on the webcast. I mean, the, the crowd is, is going nuts right now. They can taste it. Uh, but again, the situation is Kapa'a is up two sets to none, and they need to close this out if they want to be KIF champions. And off the Carlin Raposo Kamoku serve, um, Mary Magoon hits that one into the net, so Warriors take the early lead. I wasn't sure on that. I, back in the days that I coached volleyball, I used to tell my players, if you're not sure, go for it. That time they looked a little unsure, but they let it go and it paid off for them. A little off speed kind of uh, shot over the net um, gets over for Valentino and they get their first service of the third set. Oh, I thought that ball trickled over, but it went back on the Voyager side. So Kapaa takes the early 3-1 lead. Again, Kapaa is, um, you know, two, two sets to none up in this match, but they still need that third set. That was a beautiful set by Brown there. Just a little miss hit by Valentino on that one. Yeah, I like that play by the Voyagers running a back one with Judd and then setting that, um, that five bar, that red ball to Valentino on the outside. Unfortunately, just missing a little bit long for the Voyagers. Magoon. Off of that goal set again, uh, Katie Brown, I, I, I would, you know, if I could rewind the clock about 30 years, I would love to hit some of the sets she's putting up there. She's putting up what you call butter sets. Butter. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, the referee on the near side called the touch and it definitely from my angle it did look like there was a touch on that um, of course the island school um, coaches aren't agreeing but it from this angle it definitely looked like there was a touch on that play so the referees are getting together what are they talking about I think they're uh, discussing whether or not Island School touched the ball. Um, the refs called an out ball on the hit by Kapa'a, um, and the linesmen calling a touch on the Voyager side. So the Voyagers are disputing the call, and we'll see what uh, the referee calls. It is one of the toughest calls in volleyball. Um, it's so tough that at the uh, collegiate and professional level, they have video review now because it is such a tough call to make. There was a big seam in that block and Valentino found the opening and crushed that one. Yeah, Kapaz pin blocker should be uh, moving in more to her left. She's a little too wide to the pin with the sets going outside of the court. They just need to move their block in a little bit more to close that seam. Olivia Malafu so far has been the hitter of the game for Kapaa. I mean, we're not keeping statistics here, but she is hitting for a high percentage tonight. Yeah, once again, she's hitting that same spot, which once again is finding um, the hole in uh, Island School's defense. Wow. 
perfect pass on that one, but the timing just wasn't there, and Kapa takes an early 7-3 lead. Tough one, again, the timing wasn't right on that. But again, like you said, coach, at the beginning of the game, you know, both teams wanted to establish the middle. They're not gonna go away from that. No, and I, I, I wouldn't either. I would continue to attack the middle on both sides uh, of the net. Both of them finding success throughout this match. What a block by Malafu that time. Oh, another pancake, our second pancake of the night. I'll take a little maple syrup on that pancake. That was beautiful. I believe that was Carlin Raposo Kamoku with the pancake. Man, are, is that a short stack or are we hitting a full <laughs> stack? <laughs> there were no macadamia nuts in that one. Oh, what great placement there by the young middle blocker, Halliday. Halliday uh, catching Kapaz defense cheating inside and thinking they were going to go for the tip right over the block and she puts it deep to the sideline and to the corner. Great shot by Halliday. Oh, that was way outside of the pin and somehow Kamoku got that inside. I, I want to say that was inside like the three foot line. Yeah, that ball just set a, a little too wide for Komoku. Komoku makes the adjustment, finds the corner. We've talked a lot tonight about um, Katie Brown setting, but what do you think of uh, the job Samiano's done for the Warriors tonight? I think she's doing a great job. You know, this is also her first year in uh, the setting position. Uh, she's never really set before, but I think she's taken reign of this offense uh, once again and just trying to put her hitters in the best possible situation. Island School. Um, we're seeing something out of them so far in this third set. More unforced errors than they've had all night. Yeah, Island School with a change up in the setting position, um, taking out um, Brown and inserting uh, Maya Ventura into the setting spot. So you'll notice the you'll notice the change in the tempo and the height of the set from Island School um, with the change. Uh, but once again, like you said, Matt, uh, just unforced errors um, by the Voyagers, unfortunately. Again, what an atmosphere tonight. Um, again, we want to thank um, Mr. Chris Sanderl and the Kapahai uh, Digital Production Media team um, for coming out here. Hope you guys are enjoying um, the, the webcast. Um, these guys are, um, of course, they're students, camera, camera operators, and running the technical directing and directing and they're learning on the job but what a great experience for them to to uh, be able to uh, put into practice the, the production work that they've learned in class and um, I, I've, I've been watching their productions over the past couple of years and they just seem to be getting better and better each time yeah I, I think um, hats off to the students for Obviously, the time that they're putting in, right? They're not, I don't think, getting any extra credit, or maybe they are for uh, being here uh, tonight. Uh, but just uh, uh, just the job, great job that they're doing. I mean, hats off to them. And we're thankful for their time and uh, uh, efforts that they're putting into this broadcast tonight. Well, Principal Cox should definitely give Mr. Sander a raise. I agree. Back to action. And again, Holiday solid at the net, 
that's why you call timeouts, right? You call a timeout to get the ball, to get the side out, to calm your team down. So a great timeout by Coach Deej Polaris. And Mandy Gokhan goes back to serve for the Voyagers. Tough server here for the Voyagers. Yeah, I was going to say, that looked like it did not get over the net. And so uh, fourth contact is called on that play. And Kapa, I mean, they're off to the dream start here in set number three. Yeah, as I kind of said, playing small games, they were able to get to seven points first. Once again, pushing to that next, uh, that next point mark in 15. And uh, unfortunately, Judd in the net for the Voyagers, giving Kapa um, a point and uh, closer towards that 25. Once again, just some unforced and uncharacteristic uh, mistakes by the Voyagers right now. So that ball landed outside of the court. However, a touch was called. And so the Voyagers get the ball back. And back to serve for them is uh, their setter, Maya Ventura. And again, another unforced error. And Kapa is going to take that, right? Um, there's nothing better if you're on the other side than a serve that goes out of bounds. Samiano, she sprawled out on the floor, got it with one hand. And those are the kinds of plays that win you championships. Yeah, you know, unfortunately at times when things are just going your way, I mean, the ball just so happens to roll your way. Um, and, you know, I think, um, you know, sometimes that's just how the ball rolls sometimes. Kanoi Hanneberg from the right side. And we haven't said her name too much, too many times tonight, but she is a force on the right side for this team. Yeah, the Voyager is being a little tentative on their offense right now. Magoon taking a, um, a bit of um, heat on her, uh, on her attacks. Um, if I were them, I would just, you know, keep attacking um, because that's what they were doing in the first two sets. But Seems like they're trying to be a little bit more tentative uh, with their offense right now. Yeah, there's a there's an old saying in volleyball: if you're gonna go down, go down swinging. And um, definitely the Voyagers, in my opinion, should keep swinging away. They've inserted uh, Katie Brown back into the game, so let's see if that makes a difference here. You know, if Kapa keeps passing the ball the way they are, though, it's going to be really tough for the Voyagers to get back into this set. Yeah, Kapa being able to run their offense pretty, uh, you know, pretty, pretty smoothly right now, having all of their three options on the net, uh, you know, which bodes well for the for the Warriors. Uh, let's see if the Voyagers can come back here, get a nice pass set, and kill on this on this play. Again, Gokhan put a nice ball there, a little tight on the net, but definitely um, something to work with. Maybe they were a little too ambitious trying to run the back one on that play. But again, Kapa with the 19 to eight lead in the third set, already up two sets to none. Kapa Warriors six points away from the KIF championship. Yeah, if I was the Voyagers kind of coming out of this timeout, I would Keep the offense very simple and basic. Run your one, your four outside, and your red on the back. Trying not to be too fancy and just stick it very basic and fundamentally, um, you know, uh, fundamentally sound offense is what I would come out of this timeout and try not to do anything too fancy. 
um, and, and just do something that's familiar and what's what's gotten you to this point so far. What do you think of the decision by Island School to switch the setter out in this third set? You know, sometimes when you make a change in any kind of personnel, sometimes it can work to your advantage. It gives a little break, something a little different for, you know, the opposing team as far as tempo and offense, um, you know, but unfortunately, um, Voyagers um, had to insert back um, Katie Brown into the game. So, another hitting error by Island School, and Kapa gets to 20 points. So they are now leading 20 to 8 in the third set with Kylie Ann Baltazar, the junior, back to serve. Another hitting error, just, just missed the corner. That was very close, just inches away by Nohea Judd. What a play though, that's the play that I'm talking about. She came in for that one, set just a little high for Judd, letting her hit it underneath the ball and just catching the court a little wide. And there, when you need a big point, who else are you gonna go to than Mary Magoon? Yeah, she's their point getter right now for the Voyagers. If I was Katie Brown, I'll be setting her the ball every single ball to get us uh, get her team back into this game. Aside from having power, she's a very crafty hitter. I mean, she makes it difficult for the blockers. Smart play by Samiano that time to just push it over. And the Kapa faithful. Loved that play right there. Olivia Malafu, who is destined to play Division I basketball somewhere, but um, you know, tonight she's, the vo she's a volleyball star and she's been big in this match. That's always, that's always kind of a tough um, ball to get over, that down ball, kind of out of system. And Kui Hunt has done well with that all season, just made that error that one time. Yeah, 15 feet off the net, you know, hard to control, but gotta find the court for the Warriors. Beautiful set by Samiano that time. What a dig by Baltazar. effort on both sides of the court that time, but Kapa right now, they really can do no wrong. What a dig by Hunt! Valentino, Brittany Valentino keeps the game alive for the Voyagers. They get the side out. Actually, Sierra Summer did all she really needed to do on that by getting that touch. Uh, Kapao will be a little disappointed they didn't get that ball up. Play by 
Raposo Kamoku. And that brings us to Aloha Ball. The yeah. Warriors 24, Voyagers 11. Man, I sense this place is gonna, is, is gonna uh, go crazy if the Warriors can pull off this point. Samiano with the serve. They get a free ball here. Oh, Samiano chose, chose to go to the middle there and Sierra Summer hit it into the net. So we play on here. A little bit of a chop set by Kapaz Setter, not really giving Sierra uh, much options, but here we go. We have another opportunity to close out this game. Hits that ball a little long. Everybody in a green shirt is on their feet right now. This place is loud. Again, Island School gets a point, but if we do the math here, Papa really needs, has about 10 chances to get one point. What a serve by number one of the Voyagers. And there is the match. Hanoi Hannaberg with the kill. What a game uh, by both teams. Congratulations to the Kapa High School Lady Warriors, uh, your 2023 KIF uh, Girls Volleyball Champions. Um, you know, what a great effort by them. And, um, you know, kudos to uh, Island School too as well for uh, a great season and, uh, you know, pushing uh, every team, you know, to their limits tonight. and even pushing Kapa to their limits. It wasn't no, uh, you know, the score might read 25-14 in this third set, but not indicative of the, the, the type of play and what really played out through the entire night. So um, congratulations to uh, Island School Voyagers too as well, uh, to their coaches, to their program, to their school, their administration, and to their community. Um, you know, nothing uh, to put their heads down about. Um, but congratulate them on a great season. Absolutely. I mean, those girls all year, um, they battled. And, you know, Kapa just seemed to improve in this second round. And coming into this match tonight, the home court advantage was huge for them. And, you know, they, they came out, they balled tonight. And uh, Island School is now singing their alma mater. I mean, uh, in football, you've got, um, you know, I, I, I think the fans and the crowd here was the seventh man tonight. Um, they definitely played a huge role um, in the success, I think, for the Lady Warriors tonight. So we also want to say a big mahalo to all the Kapa'a Warrior fans for showing up for the Lady Warriors tonight and, you know, wheeling them to this victory too as well. They're very much... Um, um, need to be credited for I think the win tonight and I know that the girls and coaches appreciate the support that they're getting from their fans right now. Absolutely and we want to congratulate coach head coach Tori Tuttle uh, assistant coach 
Akiapo Gonzalez, Paya Tafea, and also I know Coach Kekwa Umala and Coach Mailika Napoleon, also part of the program. Uh, hey, only Kapa's fifth KIF championship in history. Exactly, and kind of an interesting note, the last time that Kapa'a won a KIF championship was back in 2016. And one particular player from their, uh, one of particular coach on their coaching staff right now was a part of that team in Paya Tafea, was part of that 2016 KIF championship team, which finished off fourth in the HHSAA state tournament uh, that year and so. Um, you know, maybe we'll talk a little bit about the HHSAA tournament and what's up for the Warriors coming up in a little bit. But, um, you know, I think the Warriors finished fourth place uh, that year in 2016. And, you know, hoping our Warriors can be able to get a, a, as good of a finish, if not a better finish, than that 2016 team.